There are many ways to draw inside of Adobe Animate CC, and I'm going to show you one of my favorite ways using mostly primitive tools in combination with object drawing mode, snap to objects, and a little bit of editing with the selection tool, which is the black arrow up here on top. Now the first thing I want to do is to make sure that I can see all of the available tools in my toolbar as well as their sub selections. So I'm going to just click and drag the left edge to create two columns as we see here. Now I can see everything that the toolbar has to offer. Now I want not just the rectangle tool but the rectangle primitive tool. So I long press to bring that other option up and I'm going to select rectangle primitive. Now you'll notice in properties panel I have a rectangle options section and the slider, which is currently at its default setting of zero, what that does is allows me to adjust how the corners look on the primitive I'm going to create. So let me actually set this back to zero just to show you. I have a skin tone here I already like, um, but I'm going to make a shape for you and just kind of give you an idea of what this option does here, this slider. So if I just click and drag that, you'll notice the corners of my shape will change and adjust accordingly. If I slide the slider all the way to the left, the corners invert. And if I slide it all the way to the right, I get the most rounded corners. Okay. Having said that, let me actually delete this and start over. What I like to do is grab this rectangle tool and before I do anything, slide that all the way to the right to a value of 100. And I'm going to start by drawing the character's head. And next I'm going to move on to the eyes. And for that, I'm just going to grab the oval tool. I'm going to click on the fill color here and I'm just going to grab black. Now the one thing I want to make sure of is down here is I want to turn on object drawing mode. You'll notice that it has a container around it now because it's now an object drawing. So what this allows me to do is work entirely inside of one layer, which is actually kind of nice. Let me zoom in here. So let's scale this down. I'm just going to grab the free transform tool, which is hitting Q on my keyboard or selecting it up here from the tools panel. And let's scale this down a little bit. One way I like to work, which is nice and quick, is to hold down Shift and the Alt key. Holding down Shift and the Alt key allows me to click and drag to duplicate that and move it along the same axis. And while we're at it, I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight. So for the mouth, I'm going to grab the oval tool again and a nice deep red for the inside of the mouth. Something like that. What I'm going to do is double click the object drawing and you'll notice now I wasn't seeing one but now I'm inside the drawing object that I just created. I'm going to use the black arrow which is the selection tool and just draw a marquee allowing me to select the top half of the circle. I hit the delete key on the keyboard and there I have deleted the top half of the symbol and now I have my mouth. But what I want to do is also create teeth. With the selection tool, I'm going to click and drag again. But this time, I'm only going to select about the top third of this mouth and click on the fill swatch and select white. And now you'll see it's updated and fill that selection in with white. And now I have my teeth. If you want to add a tongue, it's easy to do. Let's mix a color first. Again, with the selection tool, I'm going to click now from the bottom, working my way up, and select about that much of a region of this mouth symbol. And let's click here and then find that color. And now we have a tongue. And again with the black selection tool, the black arrow tool, I'm going to actually click anywhere along this line and bend it up a little bit. Now let's move on to the hair. Let's mix a nice color, uh, dark brown, let's say. And let's make a nice big circle, something like that. And like we did with the mouth, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Double click and select the bottom half, delete. And we have bangs. Now if we wanna add a little bit of variation to these bangs, I'm gonna double click using the black arrow tool. I'm inside the drawing object again. I'm going to click and drag upward from the bottom to select this region here and hit delete. Right, so now I've created an, an interesting shape and when I turn on snap to objects, let me zoom in, and I go and I click and drag one of these corners, you'll notice that it snaps to the other corner. Once I get close enough to another vector point, it'll snap together. 
Essentially, it's joining those two points together to create one. And we can repeat this as many times as we want to create more variations in our hair. It's up to you. And then holding down the Shift and Alt key, clicking and dragging, which will duplicate it, making the other ear. And let's make the hair behind her, the back of her head. I'm going to use for this, again, the rectangle primitive tool is what I want. I'm going to grab the same color as the hair that we already have. And I'll show you how to arrange things later, but let's create a nice big shape for the back of her head. Now, what I want to do is go to Modify, Arrange, and Send to Back. And we have her hair. The rest of the features of this character are all comprised using the primitive tools, such as rectangles and ovals. And then from there, using the selection tool to select different regions of these simple shapes to either delete them or while they're selected to change their color, whether it be shadow or highlight, whatever you see fit. For the shoes, I created just simple ovals, cut them in half, and then used the line tool to create a stroke for the sole of her shoe. And she's done. So you can see how quick and easy it is to work this way using primitive tools. It's also, it's a nice, easy way to draw even if you don't have any kind of pressure sensitive drawing tablet or maybe you're on your laptop and you're using a trackpad, um, you can still achieve kind of really cool results uh, this way. Hope you like it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use layer effects. And what's really cool about layer effects is that before we could only apply these effects or filters to the instances of movie clips. But now we can apply them to layers, which means that anything that resides inside a layer can have an effect applied to them. So to demonstrate this, I have a graphic symbol that contains a nested animation of a walk cycle. So let's say we want to add a realistic shadow to this character. We can do that through the use of layer effect. So what I'm going to do is right click over the layer containing our animation and I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to drag this layer below the original layer. And let's rename it walk cycle shadow. Okay, so now I'm going to lock the top layer and I'm also going to convert it to outlines just so it's easier to see the layer underneath and what I'm doing. I'm going to select the instance on the stage and grab the free transform tool and I'm going to position the center point down here. And this is just going to allow me to then scale the artwork like this. And maybe even skew it over like this. Now what we want to do is just click on the frame in this layer and now you'll notice in the properties panel we can apply filters. So using the drop down menu, I'm going to select drop shadow. If I scrub the timeline, you'll notice that this effect is applied to the entire layer. And so for this shadow to look convincing, we're going to need to actually play around with some of these settings. So the first thing we want to do is hide the object. This will actually hide the original artwork and just show us the drop shadow. You might want to apply just a subtle amount of blur. So maybe a value of three will work really well. Strength, if you reduce the amount of strength, will lower the opacity of the shadow itself. And this is great if you have, say, a background that has lots of different colors and things like that, and you want them to show through. Um, quality is up to you if you want to set it to low, medium, or high. I'm going to keep it at medium. I typically just set the distance to zero. And so now when we scrub our timeline, you can see just how realistic this shadow looks. And if for whatever reason you want to play around with the perspective of the shadow, it's easy to do. Just click on the symbol in this layer. Select the free transform tool and adjust as necessary. But you're not limited to just adding drop shadows for characters. Let's add a bevel to our character. So with the default settings, this is what the bevel looks like. But let's soften that a little bit. So I'm going to lower the strength to a value of around 29 or 30 percent. I'm also going to adjust the amount of blur. By adding blur, you can give your character or whatever resides in this layer a nice sense of depth. And again, if you want to make any kind of adjustments, just select a frame in this layer and make whatever adjustments you need. If you want, you can even change the colors of the shadows and the highlights. Another cool effect you can add, let's say you want to create an outline for your character. I'm going to select the glow effect. 
And so for this glow effect, I'm going to change the actual glow color to black because I want this character to have a black outline to it. And we're going to increase the strength to about a thousand. And the blur I'm going to set to about five. So that in combination with beveling and the shadow really adds a nice touch of dimension to our character. And to show you just one more cool effect, I'm going to select Adjust Color. And by adjusting some of these values for saturation and hue, we can completely change the